Repaint and reflow are fundamental concepts that play crucial roles in rendering web pages within a browser. When a web page loads or undergoes updates, the browser goes through a series of steps to display its content on the screen. Repaint and reflow are integral to this process and have significant implications for how the page is presented. To understand these concepts more thoroughly, let's break down the steps the browser goes through to display its content on the screen. First, the HTML document retrieved from the server is used to construct the document object model representing the page's structure. Then, styles are fetched and interpreted, forming the CSS object model that defines the visual appearance of the page. After that, based on the DOM and CSS OM, a rendering tree is generated, which is a set of rendering objects. This tree duplicates or mimics the DOM structure but excludes invisible elements like head or those styled with display none. Essentially, the rendering tree describes the visual visual representation of the DOM. Then, for each element within the rendering tree, its placement on the page is calculated, leading to a process called layout. Browsers generally use an optimized approach, where a single operation often positions all elements almost as if it was done in a flow. Some complex elements such as tables may require multiple operations for layout. Ultimately, all elements are rendered within the browser, leading to the actual painting of the visible content on the screen. So, when a web page initially loads, or when it has non-empty content, at least one reflow and repaint operation takes place. So let's explore what reflow and repaint operations are. Reflow refers to the calculation of the positions and dimensions of all elements on a web page in response to changes in the page's structure or styles. When the content or style of an element changes, the browser needs to recalculate the layout of the entire page, taking into account the relationships between various elements, their sizes, and their positions. Reflow is a computationally intensive task and can have a significant impact on the performance of a web page. It is sometimes also referred as layout because it involves arranging and positioning elements on the page. In short, reflow is triggered in the following ways. Changing element dimensions like width, height, padding, margin, border, and so on, adding or removing elements from the DOM, changing font sizes, or modifying styles or classes that affect layout. And repaint, on the other hand, refers to the process of updating the visual appearance of elements on the screen without changing their layout. It involves drawing pixels on the screen to reflect changes in visual properties like colors, background images, and shadows. Unlike Reflow, Repaint doesn't involve recalculating the layout but focuses solely on updating the visual representation of elements. Repaint is triggered in the following ways. Changing background color or image, modifying text color or other visual properties. So now that we are clear with Reflow and Repaint, let's understand how they affect performance. Reflow can be particularly expensive in terms of computation and time. Each reflow can trigger a chain reaction, causing multiple subsequent reflows as elements adjust to the changes. Minimizing the frequency of reflows is crucial for maintaining smooth performance. This can be achieved by using CSS techniques like utilizing the transform property for animations, which doesn't trigger a reflow, and by batching changes together to minimize layout calculations. On the other hand, while repaint is generally less resource intensive than reflow, excessive repaints can still affect performance. For instance, animating properties like background colors using CSS transitions can trigger unnecessary repaints. To optimize repaints, it's important to minimize the number of properties being animated and utilize hardware accelerated CSS properties. In summary, understanding how reflow and repaint work and their effects on performance is crucial for web developers aiming to create efficient and responsive web pages. Optimizing these processes can lead to better user experiences and improved overall performance. That's all for the video. If you found it insightful, don't forget to like and subscribe.